bigger mandate. In the second term, our government under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister doubled down on its responsibilities to build a prosperous country with comprehensive development of all people and all regions. Our government strengthened its mantra to Sapka Saath, Sapka Vikas and Sapka Vishwas. Our development philosophy covered all elements of inclusivity, namely social inclusivity through coverage of all strata of the society and geographical in inclusivity through development of all regions of the country. With the whole of nation approach of Sapka Prayas, the country overcame the challenges of once in a century pandemic, took long strides towards Atmanirbhar Bharat, committed to Panch Pran and laid solid foundations for the Amritkal. As a result, as a result, our young country has high aspirations, pride in its present and hope and confidence for a bright future. We expect that our government, based on its stupendous work, will be blessed again by the people with a resounding mandate. <laughs> inclusive development and growth. Our humane and inclusive approach to development is a marked and deliberate departure from the earlier approach of provisioning up to village level. Development programs were thus provisioned. In the last 10 years, however, have targeted each and every household and individual through housing for all, ghar ghar jal, electricity for all, cooking gas for all, bank accounts and financial services for all in record time. The worries about food, the worries about food have been eliminated through free ration for 80 crore people. Minimum support, minimum support prices for the produce of Annadatta are periodically increased appropriately. These and the, base, and the provision of basic necessities have enhanced real income in the rural areas. Their economic needs could be addressed, thus spurring growth and generating jobs. Social justice. Our government is working with an approach to development that is all round, all pervasive, and all inclusive. Sarvangin, Sarvasparsi, or Sarvasamaveshi. It covers all castes and people at all levels. We are working to make India a Vikasit Bharat by 2047. For achieving that goal, we need to improve people's capability and empower them. Previously, social justice was mostly a political slogan. For our government, social justice is an effective and necessary governance model. The saturation, the saturation approach of covering all eligible people is the true and comprehensive achievement of social justice. This is secularism in action, reduces corruption, and prevents nepotism, prevents by Bhati Jawad. There is transparency and assurance that benefits are delivered to all eligible people. The resources are distributed fairly. All, regardless of their social standing, get access to opportunities. We are addressing systemic inequalities that have plagued our society. We focus on outcomes and not on outlays, so that the social economic transformation is achieved. As our Prime Minister firmly believes, we need to focus on four major castes. They are Garib, Mahilaye, Yuva, and Annadatta. Their needs, their aspirations, 
and their welfare are our highest priority. The country progresses when they progress. All four require and receive government support in their quest to better their lives. Their empowerment and well-being will drive the country forward. Garib Kalyan, Desh Ka Kalyan. We believe in empowering the poor. The earlier approach of tackling poverty through entitlements had resulted in very modest outcomes. When the poor became empowered partners in the development process, government's power to assist them also increases manifold. With the pursuit of Sabka Saath, in these 10 years, the government has assisted 25 crore people to get freedom from multi-dimensional poverty. Our government's efforts are now getting synergized with energy and passion of such empowered people. This is truly elevating them from poverty. Direct benefit transfer of 34 lakh crore rupees from the government using PM Jandan accounts has led to savings of 2.7 lakh crores of rupees for the government. This savings has been realized through avoidance of leakages prevalent earlier. The savings have helped in providing more funds for Garib Kalyan. PM Swanidhi has provided credit assistance to 78 lakh street vendors. From that total, from that total of 78 lakh street vendors, 2.3 lakh have received credit for the third time. PM Janman Yojana reaches out to the particularly vulnerable tribal groups who have remained outside the realm of development so far. PM Vishwakarma Yojana provides end-to-end -end support to artisans and craftspeople engaged in 18 trades. The schemes for empowerment of divyangs and transgender persons reflect firm resolve of our government to leave no one behind. Welfare of Annadatta. Farmers are our Annadatta. Every year under PM Kisan Samman Yojana, direct financial assistance is provided to 11.8 crore farmers including marginal and small farmers. Crop insurance is given to 4 crore farmers under PM Fasal Bhima Yojana. These, besides several other programs, are assisting Annadatta in producing food for the country and for the world. Electronic National Agricultural Market has integrated 1,361 mandis and is providing services to 1.8 crore farmers with trading volume of 3 lakh crores of rupees. The sector is poised for inclusive, balanced, higher growth and productivity. These are facilitated from farmer-centric policies, income support, coverage of risks through price and insurance support, promotion of technologies, and innovations through startups. Empowering the Amrit PD, the Yuva. Our prosperity depends on adequately equipping and empowering the youth. The National Education Policy 2020 is ushering the transformational reforms. PM Schools for Rising India, PM Shri, are delivering quality teaching and nurturing holistic and well-rounded individuals. The Skill India mission has trained 1.4 crore youth, upskilled and reskilled 54 lakh youth, and established 3,000 new ITIs. A large number of institutions of higher learning, namely seven IITs, 16 triple ITs, seven IAMs, 15 AIMS 
and 390 universities have been set up. PM Mudra Yojana has sanctioned 43 crore loans aggregating to 22.5 lakh crores of rupees for entrepreneurial aspirations of our youth. Besides that, Fund of Funds, Startup India and Startup Credit Guarantee schemes are assisting our youth. They are also becoming Rosgar Data. The country is proud of our youth scaling new heights in sports. The highest ever medal tally in Asian Games and Asian Para Games in 2023 reflects a high confidence level. Chess prod prodigy and our number one ranked player Pragnananda put up a stiff fight against the reigning world champion Magnus Carlsen in 2023. Today, India has over 80 chess grandmasters compared to little over 20 in 2010. Momentum for Nari Shakti. The empowerment of women through entrepreneurship, ease of living and dignity for them has gained momentum in these 10 years. 30 crore mudra yojana loans have been given to women entrepreneurs. Female enrollment in higher education has gone up by 28% in 10 years. In STEM courses, girls and women constitute 43% of enrollment, one of the highest in the world. All these measures are getting reflected in the increasing participation of women in workforce. Making triple talaq illegal, reservation of one-third seats for women in the Lok Sabha and state assemblies and giving over 70% houses under PM Awaz Yojana in rural areas to women and giving over 70% houses under PM Awas Yojana in rural areas to women as sole or joint owners have enhanced their dignity. Exemplary track record of governance, development and performance. Besides delivering on high growth in terms of gross domestic product, the government is equally focused on a more comprehensive GDP, that is, governance, development, and performance. Our government has provided transparent, accountable, people-centric, and prompt trust-based administration with citizen-first and minimum government, maximum governance approach. The impact of all-round development is discernible in all sectors. There is macroeconomic stability, including in the external sector. Investments are robust. The economy is doing well. People are living better and earning better, with greater, even greater aspirations for future. Average real income of the people has increased by 50%. Inflation is moderate. People are getting empowered, equipped and enabled to pursue their aspirations. There is effective and timely delivery of programs and of large projects. Economic management. The multi-pronged economic management over the past 10 years has complemented people-centric, inclusive development. Following are some of the major elements. One. All forms of infrastructure, physical, digital, or social, are being built in record time. All, number two, all parts of the country are becoming active participants in economic growth. Number three, digital public infrastructure, a new factor of production, as it, in the 21st century, 
is instrumental in formalization of the economy. Number four, goods and services tax has enabled one nation, one market, one tax. Tax reforms have led to deepening and widening of tax base. Number five, strengthening of the financial sector has helped in making savings, credit and investments more efficient. Number six, GIFT, IFSC and the Unified Regulatory Authority, IFSCA, are creating a robust gateway for global capital and financial services for the economy. Number seven, proactive inflation management has helped keep inflation within the policy band. Now the global context, Honorable Speaker, sir, geopolitically, global affairs are becoming more complex and challenging with wars and conflicts. Globalization is being redefined with reshoring and friend shoring, disruption and fragmentation of supply chains and competition for critical minerals and technologies. A new world order is emerging after the COVID pandemic. India assumed the G20 presidency during very difficult times for the world. The global economy was going through high inflation, high interest rates, low growth, very high public debt, low trade growth and climate changes. The pandemic has led to a crisis of food, fertilizer, fuel and finances for the world while India successfully navigated its way. The country showed the way forward and built consensus on solutions for those global problems. The recently announced India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor is a strategic and economic game changer for India and others. In the words of Honorable Prime Minister, the corridor, and I quote, will become the basis of world trade for hundreds of years to come. And history will remember that this corridor was initiated on Indian soil, unquote. Vis vision for Vikasit Bharat. Our vi vision for Vikasit Bharat is that of prosperous Bharat in harmony with nature, with modern infrastructure, and providing opportunities for all citizens and all regions to reach their potential. With confidence arising from strong and exemplary track record of performance and progress, earning Sapka Vishwas, the next five years will be years of unprecedented development and golden moments to realize the dream of developed India by 2047. The trinity of demography, democracy and diversity backed by Sabka Prayas has the potential to fulfill aspirations of every Indian. As Honorable Prime Minister in his Independence Day address to the nation mentioned, I quote, there is no dearth of opportunities, as many opportunities as we want. The country is capable of creating more opportunities. Sky is the limit, unquote. Strategy for Amritkar. Our government will adopt economic policies that foster and sustain growth, facilitate inclusive and sustainable development, improve productivity, create opportunities for all, help them enhance their capabilities and contribute to generation of resources to power investments and fulfill aspirations. Guided by the principle, reform, perform and transform, the government will take up next generation reforms and build consensus with the states and stakeholders for effective implementation. It is an important policy priority for our government to ensure timely and adequate finances, relevant technologies, 
and appropriate training for the micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs, to grow and also compete globally, orienting the regulatory environment to facilitate the growth will be an important element of this policy mix. Aligning with the Panchamrit goals, our government will facilitate sustaining high and more resource efficient economic growth. This will work towards energy security in terms of availability, accessibility and affordability. For meeting the investment needs, our government will prepare the financial sector in terms of size, capacity, skills, and regulatory framework. Aspirational Districts Program. Our government stands ready to assist the states in faster development of aspirational districts and blocks, including generation of ample economic opportunities. Development of the East. Our government will pay utmost attention to make the eastern region and its people a powerful driver of India's growth. PM Awas Yojana Grameen. Despite the challenges due to COVID, implementation of PM Awas Yojana Grameen continued and we are close to achieving the target of three crore houses. 2 crore more houses will be taken up in the next 5 years to meet the requirement arising from increase in the number of families. Rooftop solarization and muft bijli. Through rooftop solarization, 1 crore households will be enabled to obtain up to 300 units free electricity every month. This scheme follows the resolve of Honorable Prime Minister on the historic day of consecration of Sri Ram Mandir in Ayodhya. <laughs> Following benefits are expected. Savings up to 15 to 18 thousand rupees annually for households from free solar electricity and selling the surplus to the distribution companies. Charging of electric vehicles. Entrepreneurship opportunities for a large number of vendors for supply and installation. Employment opportunities for the youth with technical skills in manufacturing, installation and maintenance. Housing for middle class. Our government will launch a scheme to help deserving sections of the middle class, and I quote from Honorable Prime Minister's words, living in rented houses or slums or chawls and unauthorized colonies, unquote, to buy and build, to buy or build their own houses. <laughs> Medical colleges. Several youth are ambitious to get qualified as doctors. They aim to serve our people through improved health care services. Our government plans to set up more medical colleges by utilizing the existing hospital infrastructure under various departments. A committee for this purpose will be set up to examine the issues and make relevant recommendations. Cervical cancer vaccination. Our government will encourage vaccination for girls in the age group of 9 to 14 years for preven prevention of cervical cancer. <laughs> maternal and child health care. Various schemes for maternal and child care will be brought under one comprehensive program for synergy in implementation. Upgradation of Anganwadi centers under Saksham Anganwadi and portion 2.0 will be expedited, expedited for improved nutrition delivery, early childhood care and development. The newly designed U-Win platform for managing immunization 
and intensified efforts of Mission Indra Dhanush will be rolled out expeditiously throughout the country. Ayushman Bharat Health care cover under Ayushman Bharat scheme will be extended to all ASHA workers, to all Anganwadi workers and helpers.